Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Release Party Thursday. I am so excited to have you here. I love getting a chance to come on to these um, and chat with some of the engineers and PMs so y'all can see and hear firsthand from the people who work on these features what's latest in the most recent VS Code update. Um, so Textic, hello. Thanks for being here. You got here early too. Love it. Um, Today, we have a great lineup. Um, if y'all haven't already started checking out the most recent VS Code update, it went live last week. So hopefully you've had a chance to test out some of those features. Let me know in the chat what your favorite has been so far. Um, and we've got a great lineup today. Before we kick off, I do just wanna do a couple of quick plugs. Um, wherever you are watching the live stream from today, so whether that's Twitch or our YouTube channel, definitely make sure to tune back in tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time because we will have the Python Pulse, which is a monthly stream we do with Dawn Wages. Um, she is absolutely amazing, and she'll be talking about Data Wrangler with Jeffrey Mew tomorrow. Um, Dawn's awesome. If you all haven't checked that out yet already, definitely tune in to tomorrow's live stream as well. Um, Dawn is one of my favorite people. We actually hosted VS Code Day together a couple of weeks ago. Um, so one more plug I wanna do, um, if y'all haven't already checked out our VS Code Day on demand content, definitely make sure to do that. We've got the link on the screen here. Um, and then also if you're on our YouTube channel, there's actually just a playlist dedicated to it as well for VS Code Day 2023. It was so much fun. I hope y'all got to see it live, um, but if not, we have all of the content on demand so you can be a part of the fun. I know we've got a couple of, oh, Dee's Computer World. I always love seeing you here. Um, we are so happy to be um, to have you here. I see a question about what is actually VS Code made up of. I think we can probably ask one of the engineers that to talk a little bit about how VS Code is made. And yes, the developers do use VS Code to write VS Code, which is very meta. Um, all right. Hello, <laughs> Coder no Nerd. <laughs> hello. Yes, always happy to be here. I would not miss these release parties for the world. It's always so fun. Alessandro, so good to see you here. Hello. Thank you for joining. Um, okay. I know y'all want to get to the meat of things, but before we do that, I want to go ahead and say thank you to our contributors. All right, so at the bottom of our release notes, if y'all haven't already known, we always include a section to thank our contributors because we truly mean it when we say we cannot do this without you. We have an amazing team here, engineers, PMs, everything, but we also really rely on the community too to help with issue tracking and actually putting in contributions from the community. Um, so I'm just gonna do a quick scroll through of these. If you're here, thank you so much for everything that you have done to be a part of VS Code. Um, we really, really appreciate it. You can see there's quite a few people here. So I'll just do a quick scroll through. I wish I could call you out uh, name by name, but unfortunately we can't do that. <laughs> we do not have the time for that. So thank you there. And you can always check these out at the end of every release notes to see those people. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and head to our first guest, Matt. Hey, Matt. Hi. How's it going? Uh, going all right. A little early here, but happy oh to be gosh, here. Oh my gosh, I was just saying that. I feel bad because these are always at 8 a.m. Pacific time, and a lot of the engineering team is in Pacific time, so it's always bright and early for y'all. So thank you for being here and having your cup of coffee with us. <laughs> cool. All right, well, what will you have to show us today? So I'm going to be showing off two different features. Um, one is about dragging and dropping, and then one is about fixing spelling errors more easily for commit messages. Awesome. OK, cool. Let's see it. All right, so the first one here is um, something that you might want to do uh, is create a image in a markdown file. And you could go and type out the actual image syntax. But for a while now, you've been able to drag and drop content from VS Code's File Explorer or from your normal desktop into VS Code's editors to do this. So here, I'm just dragging the file from over here into my markdown file here. And you can see it says, hold shift to drop into editor. Hold down shift, I get this nice little drag indicator. And now I can drop the content. So that feature has existed for a while. But in this most recent iteration, we added this new option that lets you change how the content is actually dropped. So after dropping the content, you see this little widget showing up over here. When I click on this, you can see I can select how the content is going to be inserted. So I know this is a little small, but the first one says insert markdown image. And then we have insert relative path. So if I switch to that, now it's just inserted a normal path instead of the markdown image syntax we we're getting before. Or I could insert the entire path to the image as well. So here's the full path to the image that's getting inserted. So I can just switch between these 
And this little icon will actually stay up until I actually start typing or until I move the cursor somewhere else in the file. So if I go back here and insert and then say, go to relative path, if I'm happy with this and I move the cursor somewhere else, then that little drop indicator will go away. Now, this is nice because these options are actually coming from extensions. So out of the box, VS Code will include the options for inserting um, the markdown image that's coming from our built-in markdown extension. And we'll also have the option for inserting the relative paths if you're dragging and dropping something that looks like a file. But extensions can come along and contribute other options. So if we go over to a notebook, for instance, now this is also something that's built in, but it's just showing some of the um, options of how things can be inserted. Again, I can just drag and drop the file here, hold down shift, and now I'm inserting this. And in this case, I could actually say, instead of inserting a markdown image, which is just creating a uh, reference to that image, I could actually insert it as an attachment. And when I say insert as attachment, it's going to copy the image data into the notebook itself so that if I went and shared that notebook with anybody, it would also include that image data. And now I have copied the image data into the notebook here, and anybody that receives the notebook would be able to also see the same image. So I can- Okay. So, so that's kind of like if you were like exporting the notebook and then sending it to someone, then they would have that basically attached yes. to it. Yeah, and you wouldn't yeah. have to remember to also send the image along with it. So okay. instead of just sending your entire project directory, you could just send the notebook file and everything would nicely start showing up in it as well. That's and awesome. you can see that this insert as attachment option is an example of another type of drop option that could be created by extensions. So we're really looking forward to seeing what extensions come up with here. It's all something that they can easily can contribute to. You can imagine it for different programming languages. Maybe when you drag and drop something, you insert a reference to that file in a, a syntax that's specific to that programming language. So there's a lot of cool options that we're looking forward to seeing what extensions do with this. Yeah, absolutely. I love that that's kind of, there's a lot of other ways that drag and drop can be included with those contributions from the extensions. Um, can you do drag and drop just with the keyboard? It looked like you were kind of doing a lot of mouse action. So drag and drop itself is a keyboard or a mouse kind of action, but mm -hmm. copy paste is basically the keyboard equivalent of drag and drop here. So what I've done is I clicked on in the Explorer, I actually went and said copy over here. So I'll say uh, copy get a copy of the image file. And now to go and insert the image, I can just paste. And this is going to do basically the same as drag and drop. This is something that is a little bit more experimental. Um, so it's not currently enabled by default in the normal VS Code stable build, but in Insiders, just pasting into a, a file here, uh, you can see that I got the same markdown image syntax. And then I can also go to the drop selector over here and actually switch between things the same way that I could for drag and drop. So. Again, this is a little preview of something that is not currently in stable, but it is a, a showing off how you can do the exact same thing using only the keyboard. Awesome. I love that. And someone said, um, I really need help with my spelling issues. So thanks for that. Um, so that way you can kind of just drag and drop and make sure that the link's not broken. But I think even Matt, a couple of releases ago, if you do kind of break the, the link or have something, it will kind of squiggle and tell you, right? Yeah. So if I went in here and said image slash cat, okay. uh, I've turned on markdown validation in the settings, and it's now telling me that this file doesn't exist. So this does help you create the initial image, but if you actually went and renamed things over here and broke some of your images, uh, you'd get this nice squiggle in your markdown telling you that. That's awesome. So handy to make sure, yeah, because <laughs> I know I have that issue too, where I'll move things around, and then all of a sudden I'm like, what happened? What broke? And now you know right away from that indicator. Cool. All right. Do you have anything else to show us today, Matt? Yeah. So the other one is just going to be a very quick demo here, but... How many times have you been writing commit messages and then you make some sort of embarrassing spelling mistake? Uh, oh my gosh, so yes. <laughs> this is like a really common thing for me where I'll write the commit message in VS Code and then I'll go up to GitHub and I'll be reviewing the PR uh, creation on GitHub and it'll have like a bunch of underlines everywhere that I wish I had caught beforehand. Uh, so now VS Code actually supports fixing those spelling errors directly in the source control box here. So I have some uh, commits and in the source control, I've typed out a commit message. And you can see that we're getting this nice little squiggly here that's showing up. And I could also just go in now and I can go over to quick fix and say what I actually want to fix here. So in this case, it's suggesting options for uh, spelling fixes here. So you can see this complete list of options here of ways that I could fix the spelling. Now, the cool thing about this is that this is actually coming from an extension. So an extension is providing both the little underlying here and then also the quick fix options. So in my case, this is coming from the code spell checker extension. But extensions could also provide other quick fixes or other diagnostics inside of the source control box. So if you're referencing maybe an issue on GitHub that doesn't exist, or if you're doing something else, an extension could come along and provide help with those as well. So 
this again is an area where we're, we're looking forward to seeing what extensions actually end up doing with this. Spell uh, checking is a great normal thing. And if you install the code spell checker um, extension here, you'll actually start getting these squiggles and quick fixes right away, which I find super helpful. Yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> I actually think it's funny that we just had that comma with someone being like, I'm not good at spelling. So I love that we have this for the drag and drop. And then you go ahead and demo also the spell checker. I feel like that was, we didn't even plan that y'all. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think that it's, it's such a good call out too, that we can have all these extensions that can contribute to this. Now we kind of have that base platform where extensions can plug into that and make those quick actions um, and really just you know, have that experience throughout the editor. That's really what we're trying to have is always that unified experience. That's awesome. There's lots of lots of good um, uh, that extension's a lifesaver for the uh, code spell checker. People are excited about. We always love seeing the markdown updates as well. Um, is there anything else that you want to show, Matt, or talk about what's on the roadmap? No, as I mentioned, um, if you go to the current insiders, you can start seeing some of the behavior around copy and paste as well. So um, if you copy and paste files into Markdown or other just normal uh, files, you'll start seeing that little drop widget or the, the paste selector widget. So if you're wanting to try that out, give it a try. Um, we're looking for feedback because it's a little bit more experimental than the drag and drop stuff. Awesome. Oh, it always good to plug insiders. Um, I think a lot of people don't realize that you can get access to a lot of these features early on and play around with them and leave that feedback if you have insiders. So definitely go ahead and download that if y'all are interested in getting some of these features a little early and play around with them before they get into the stable release. All right, Matt, thank you so much for coming on. It's always a pleasure having you here. I'm sure we will see you in many, many future release parties as well. Thank you. Thanks. All right, with that, let's go ahead and head to our next demo with Courtney. Hey, Courtney. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> it always happens. Of course. Of course. <laughs> <I know. laughs> How, How are, are you? you today? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. A little tired, but it's a good way I to know. I guess this is a time too, right? So it's 8 a.m. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. We really need to switch this up or something. So it's not an awful time for people. Uh, well, thanks for being here for us. I know it's early and, and this might be one of your first release parties, I think, that you've come on. It is. It's my first release party. So hey. it's my first time around the block. We'll see how it goes. Awesome. Oh my God. <laughs> You're going to be great. <laughs> We're so excited to have you here. And we always love having new faces on here too, so people can see. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and head into your demo and see what you have to show us. Yeah, so I am from the Python extension, but I'll be demoing some new PyLance features that the team released. Um, these are experimental um, settings here. So I'm in a Django app, and um, this is specifically going to help when I'm navigating between module like strings in between my Django apps. So the first thing that you'll need to do, these are both, or this one is enabled by default. So you need to go into your settings.json to turn it on. Um, and you can just add it here. Um, sorry. <laughs> no, it's good. I always love that it gives the IntelliSense when you're typing it, because I'm always like, right. okay, I can't remember exactly what this is. Like, I remember something like this, and then you get the whole drop down. Right, you get all of the um, experimental settings in this drop down. So mm -hmm. we're actually going to go to the go to definition string literal one um, and enable it here. So enable to true, we'll, and then we'll save this file. Um, and then for Django apps, this is really helpful. For example, when you're going to your installed apps list and you want to see what this is referencing. So you can highlight here, right click, and then do go to definition, and it'll take you to the class where it's referencing this. So easy navigation in between these um, in between these modules. And then another example here, um, if you're including the path, it'll also go to the definition here. So just enabling easy navigation um, for Django developers, web developers, and just developers in general. So um, like I said, this is a experimental setting currently. It's enabled, or it's disabled by default. So you will need to go and enable it in your settings.json. Um, and if there's any feedback, please um, give it to the team. In the future, they're hoping to enable this by default. So um, we're looking for any feedback that they um, that our users have here. Awesome. I love when we get these experimental features on here because <laughs> it really does go to show like how iterative this team works, right? We're always looking for this feedback. Um, and you mentioned um, that we can give feedback to the team if people have it. Um, is yeah. there a certain repo that people can do that? Or is it on Twitter? What's the best way to do that? 
Yeah, so the best way would be to submit issue tickets to the PyLance repo. I can put it in the chat, um, just direct you there, and then um, we can interact with the team there. Um, and then one other Python related update that I will call out is we put our run commands in a sub menu. So before um, we had run Python file in the terminal and then run selection line in Python terminal as separate things in our context menu. And now they're nested in the sub menu. So you'll see run Python, just like we see run an interactive window um, with the two um, options nested in there. So just to call out for when you're looking for run commands. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Courtney, um, for showing that and letting us know where we can do feedback. Um, also, just, you know, as a reminder, y'all, all of this is um, in the release notes. So if, you know, you kind of forget, okay, what was that setting called? You can always check the documentation there um, to do that and rewatch this live stream so you can see Courtney demo it herself. Um, we have a couple of great things. Love these Python updates. Um, we've had, you know, a couple of these in the last few release parties and people always love seeing this. So thank you for being on Courtney. Um, and then another just plug for you, um, that they love that your name is Courtney Webster. <laughs> it's perfect for your job. Um, and being <laughs> in many more release parties. I agree with that. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about that's maybe on the roadmap for, um, Python, PyLance, anything like that? Um, PyLand specifically, they're just continuing to work in um, improving the experience for web developers. So um, doing a lot of look into Django um, and how they can improve the experience there. So we'll probably be releasing more updates um, for Django developers. Shout out to all of those out there. Um, and then just constant updates and changes with the Python extension. So stay tuned. I think we'll have some exciting releases upcoming. Awesome. Thanks so much, Courtney, for being on. It was a pleasure. And yes, we will definitely be seeing more of you. <laughs> Take care. Bye. All right. And with that, let's go to our next feature with Christoph. Hey, Christoph. Hey, Amelia. How are you doing? Great. Thanks. How about you? Thanks for being here. <laughs> Yeah, it's not that early here anymore. It's a little past five in the afternoon. Yeah, I was going to so say, I think we have <laughs> the exact opposite ends of the workday today because we have people in Pacific time at 8 a.m. and then you're in Zurich, right? So it's end yes. of day for you. Yeah, cool. Well, thank you for, I guess, um, uh, delaying dinner to be here with us. <laughs> of course, right. yeah. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks. Yeah, we always love having you. Um, so what, what will you be showing us today? So today uh, I want to talk about log files that we've added to dev containers as an experimental feature. So we can collect early feedback uh, on it. And now you, you might already be familiar with, um, with dev containers. Um, at the, like, the core of dev containers, there's a configuration file, the dev container JSON, in which you basically list the languages and tools you need for development. And we then take that and build a Docker image from it, from which we create the dev container that we connect VS Code to. And then you can, uh, you can develop uh, inside, inside that dev container without having to install all the, all the tools and, and extensions for VS Code locally. That can all be done inside the container. So I want to just quickly show you what that looks like and just using some uh, a project here to, to show you. There's in the bottom left, there's the remote uh, menu. Um, just going to say, OK, reopen this folder in the container. And the first time I do that, when I don't have a, a dev container JSON, I'm, I'm now asked to pick uh, a template for the dev container JSON. There are many templates uh, to, to pick from. Um, for, for this um, project, I would just pick the uh, TypeScript template. Doing that here, then node version 20 is fine. And then finally, we are also asked for to select uh, a set of features that we want to add on top of this of this template that we just picked. And you can you can uh, think of, of features as kind of like each feature is like a, a little install script that adds some tool or maybe language so support on, on, on top of what you already have in um, in the container. I just picked the, the GitHub CLI here. Each feature, by the way, is downloaded separately and, and is also versioned separately. And, and we'll, we'll get back to the versioning of features in a, in a minute. So I'll just go with that and we go with defaults. And now the, the window reloads and um, the, 
Docker images built in the background, uh, Docker containers created, and we were then um, connected to that once once uh, once that's done. The the reason, by the way, why this list of features is so long is that this is this is open to uh, contributions from the community, and so the, the list of features that are available is constantly growing. Mm -hmm. um, so here we are now. You again see the same files basically as before. What's what's new is that we, we've added the, the dev container JSON from the template, uh, and you see that we're referencing. Well, that's, there's a lot of comments around this, but the, the essence really is that there's the, the we have to uh, reference the TypeScript uh, base image that we create the dev container from. And we also list out all the features that we want to install. In this case, it's just the, the GitHub CLI. And here, you also see that we, we're referencing the major version one of the feature. So that's the version of this feature script, not, not the version of the CLI. That's separate. Okay. And what's, uh, so what's new now is that we do record the exact version that we used uh, to install this feature um, as part of a log file. And, uh, there's actually a user setting that you need to enable in order to get the log file because it's still experimental. We we uh, will refine this further based on feedback. And what, what you can see here now, so the the actual version of the uh, feature script that we were using or the feature that we were using was 1010. Uh, that's just the, the latest version uh, with major version one at the moment. There's uh, a URI that's like pointing at the exact artifact where we downloaded this feature, which is in a, in a container registry. And there's a, a, an enc and, uh, checksum for integrity checking um, recorded here as well. And so to just mention uh, the, like the benefits of, of having a log file, uh, one maybe the one of the important benefits is that it's easier to cache the the Docker image, the result from from building the Docker image, when you have um, when you have repeatable um, image builds, and then it's also important when you pre-build your image in CI, for example, you want to have reproducible um, results. So it's important to always get the same kind of image in the end, and for that we also um, Pin the pin the version basically of the feature that's gonna gonna be used, right? And last but not least, of course, it's it's this integrity check at the very end. So we record the uh, checksum here of the feature, and we use that to make sure that uh, also at a later point that the feature, the feature's content, that script hasn't been tampered with or, or changed in changed in any way. So I can actually just to kind of demo that a little bit further normally. So tampering would mean that the, the, con the, the features content would change, right? But I can kind of simulate the effect of, of having that uh, by, by changing the checksum here. And, and if I now go and, and, and rebuild the container um, based, based on this log file, we'll see that this, this will now fail. Okay. The, uh, uh, the error message still needs a little work here and it's to be much more explicit what what have went wrong but um it, you get the idea that's that's mm -hmm. kind of uh, that's one of the attack vectors for example that the, the log file will will uh, protect you from okay i, I want to go back to um one other thing that you mentioned um you said something about the the feature version is pinned um but what if someone wanted to um actually update that feature how does that work Yes, yeah, that's a good question. Suppose suppose a version uh, one hundred eleven was released, and and you wanted to update to that. Now at the right now at the moment, you the uh, the way to do that to update to that would be to delete the log file, and then when you rebuild the container, we will we would download the latest uh, versions and write the new log file with these latest versions. But of course, in the future, we will also add uh, UI commands to to kind of make this a a nicer experience. Gotcha. Okay. So for now, it's delete it. And then once you rebuild, it will automatically kind of regenerate that log file in the yes. version one update. Okay. Good to know. Um, and then you also mentioned at the start that this is experimental um, and needs to be turned on via a setting. Can you show everyone what that setting is? Yes, certainly. So going to settings. So you need the dev container 
um, extension installed for that, right? And then once you have that, you, you just go search for log file and you'll find the dev containers experimental log file setting that you can enable with the checkbox here in, uh, in the user settings. And with that, we'll then start writing uh, this dev container log file. Okay. Cool. And, th and then um, I know we kind of mentioned in Courtney's demo where you can um, file feedback for experimental features. Where should people be filing feedback um, for this log file experimental feature? Yes. So I don't have the link handy right now, but there's uh, we have on GitHub, there's the dev container uh, spec repo where, where we uh, collect our own proposals, but also the, the community's proposal for, for uh, updating the dev container specification, and that's also where we, uh, we are working in the open on, on this log file and the log file proposal. Awesome. Okay, we'll make sure to um, get that link out to y'all. If not in the chat, then for sure in the description of this when it goes on demand, so that way y'all can try it out and then give your feedback. Awesome. All right, well, Christoph, we always love seeing these dev containers um, features. Uh, someone said, I honestly don't really know how to use dev containers, but these features look great. Coder nerd, definitely check out dev containers. They are like, when I tell you life-changing, they really are. <laughs> they make everything so <laughs> handy. So definitely check out the um, documentation there, get started, let us know what you think of it. Um, is there anything else you want to chat about that's maybe on the roadmap for dev containers, Christoph? So we will definitely continue work, working on the on the log files and like in, in a, a kind of a similar uh, Wayne, we will also add uh, a way for you to provide your uh, secret values to when you um, when you create a, a dev container. That's something that's also uh, security related and we'll, we'll be adding soon. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you so much for being here. Um, always a pleasure hearing the latest and greatest with dev containers. I'm sure we will have you back on in the future to hear even more great features. Take care. Happy to come back. Thanks. All right, and with that, that will head to our final feature with Rob. Hey, Rob. Hello. How are you doing? Doing good. How are you doing, Olivia? Good. Thanks for being here. I know it's early for you, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, three like early, one at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. um, and I know you have a lot of really cool things to show. Um, do you want to just, let's probably just dive into it, because I know people are very excited <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, for sure Copilot thing. Chat. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm here to talk about Copilot Chat and just all the ways that we've been working on integrating AI and, and uh, Copilot into basically all parts of VS Code. Um, so. I'll just get into it. Yeah, so we basically got two main interfaces um, that we're working on for getting Copilot Chat into VS Code. Um, and first is the, you know, basically this chat view, which is familiar if you use ChatGPT or anything like that, where I can just have a conversation with my my AI Copilot. Um, so, for example, you know, I might ask, um, you know, and before I start typing, I will I will mention one thing. You know, these are. If you've used any of these AI features, uh, ChatGPT or anything else, you know you know there's an element of randomness here, right? So they make for interesting demos sometimes. So yeah. you know, all I can say is my demos worked yesterday, um, and if they don't work today, you know this is all stuff that's under very active development. So uh, you might just have to bear with me. But we will see. Yeah, I think it's fun to see, right? It shows kind of like like right. This is the real experience. So I think it's good for people to see that and you know see that it is something that we're constantly iterating over, um, and you know it's it's learning. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. OK, so yeah, like I said, I can uh, have a conversation about uh, computer-related, programming-related topics with uh, Copilot Chat in the chat view. So you know, for example, if I ask it, uh, what is a stack, you know, it knows that I'm asking about the data structure and not some other kind of stack of things. Um, and while this is thinking, I know we've already gotten a lot of questions um, about how people get access to Copilot chat. So maybe we just want to like do a quick call out for that because I know we will get a lot more questions. So maybe just get that out of the way before we yeah, fully sure. dive into. Yeah, I know everyone's really excited to, to use this and I love that. We have a wait list that you can join. Um, and so we've got a link that we can throw up on the screen. Yeah, there it is. And so um, yeah, go ahead and go to that link and join the wait list and we will get you uh, access as soon as we can. Yeah, we definitely, we know that everyone wants access to it. We are doing our best to make our way through that, but we want to, you know, show in the meantime, all the iterative work we're doing on this um, to make it the best possible experience when you do get access. Yes. Yeah, so I can, 
you know, in, so in here I can I can ask about programming related topics, you know, as I'm working on my project and then some question comes to mind, I don't have to, you know, go to another window or, or go to my, my web browser or something like that. I can sort of ask about these topics right in the same uh, context where I'm already working on my code. And, and I think that's nice. Um, yeah, ask questions like this. I, I can't ask questions about things that are not programming re related, right? Because we're just trying to give you the best, you know, optimize for giving you the best answers that we can for computer related topics, but I can't ask it. You know, <laughs> if I ask if I ask about uh, a cookie recipe, then it's it's going to tell me that it, it can't help with that, right? Because this is not a, a general purpose kind of AI. We're sort of just mm -hmm. focused on, you know, the best experience we can for this one use case. Um, if I ask something else, that um, you know, we'll, we'll ask it to produce some code. Um, And it can write code in line, and we, you know, basically render this with a nice code block, which is like a real, um, you know, VS Code monitor, Monaco editor. And um, um, I, if I want to use this code in my project, and for example, I can use one of these buttons. I can use this uh, copy button and copy and paste it somewhere. I can insert it uh, at the, the current cursor location, um, or I can even just say, you know, create a new file and insert this code into the, in the file like that. Um, so that's kind of nice. And uh, you know, if this was a terminal command, I can even run it directly in the, in the terminal like that. Um, and uh, you know, if um, if the, the the chat AI comes up with some some follow up question that it thinks is relevant, then it, it will also prompt me like that, and I can just click this oh, nice. to sort of continue my conversation. Mm -hmm. um, so then, the other main interface we have for working with Copilot Chat is through a widget that is like in line in the editor itself. Um, so over here, I can just hit uh, Command I, and it's going to pop up this widget, and then I can use this when I want to sort of directly write code in my editor or even modify existing code. Right. So just to give a simple example, let's say I have this basic interface, and I want to say um, make this property optional. So it, it made the changes I was looking for. It, it added a question mark here to make the email property optional, and you can see there's there's kind of a green outline here. Um, it might be a little tough to see, but there's it's basically pointing this out as like a diff, so it, it makes to, to make sure that I know uh, what the change actually was. And then I can um, either hit Command Enter or the check mark to accept that change, and it will be you know added to my code, or I can just dismiss it or or um, hit Escape, and then it'll just clear that out. Um, and that's the change I was looking for, so I'll hit Command Enter and take that. Um, and I can also use it to um, sort of write some new code from scratch. So I could say, for example, add a function that, that tries to check whether some object is an instance of, um, of this interface. Um, I like that it says, like, generate a reply and change three lines to kind of summarize what it's done. That's nice. Yeah, exactly. Just uh, another way to make sure you you kind of notice what changed. Mm -hmm. And so I get this another another diff view that pops up and and showing me that added this function. And yep, that's what I was looking for. So I'll do that. Um, and um, just another example, if I say this, and again, it did exactly what I was looking for. And um, but if I decide I don't want to take that, then I can just hit um, escape here. And um, it sort of dismisses that change and, and then just goes back to the way the file was before. Um, so I appreciate that I can sort of, you know, experiment with changes and see exactly what changed. But, you know, if the AI goes in and goes down the wrong direction and does the wrong thing, then, you know, all I have to do is hit escape um, and I'm, I'm back to a good state. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I, I kind of want to just like talk a little bit about the, these two experiences, right? The chat panel and then the inline. Um, so it seems like the chat panel is maybe a little better if you want like more of those high level questions. Um, and then does that actually look at your contact, your code context at all for the chat panel too, though? Yeah, so right now the, the chat panel primarily just knows about what your current selection is and okay. uh, maybe some other co uh, context about the code that's in your active editor. And we're working on giving it uh, much more context about what's going on in VS Code, right? I mean, really, you know, this is built into VS Code. It's built by the VS Code team. It should know um, everything about, about what you see in, in your VS Code project and, and what you're doing, right? So um, soon it'll be able to know, um, you know, like what's going on in your terminal or like do you see an error in the debug console? And it will be able to explain that to you. Um, so that's, that's something that we are uh, actively working on is giving it more context about uh, what you see in your editor. 
Gotcha. So the, the inline chat and the chat panel basically are using the same context. They're both kind of looking at the active editor. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Good to know. Yeah, so another thing that I can show off is, um, you know, I can go from um, this, this chat widget again, and you see it says type slash for topics. So we have um, a bunch of um, extra features that we call slash commands, um, where, for example, I can say slash explain. And this is just going to generate an explanation of this code. And, and also, when I'm in this like inline chat experience, if I end up asking a question which uh, doesn't just produce code, but like um, produces you know some some freeform text, then it's actually going to go into the, the chat view because it's sort of a better place to uh, to read that. All right. So if I hit slash explain, um, it's going to to generate an explanation and um, just give me that looks like a, an accurate explanation. So that's nice. Um, I can also uh, have some other slash commands in here. Um, I can do something like slash test, where it will actually generate unit tests for the code that I've selected. Oh, that's so nice. Yes, I, I hate writing unit tests, and it's so <laughs> cool to um, get the AI to, to think through some of the cases for me. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, um, what it's actually doing here is it's generating some code, and um, the AI has decided that it should actually go into a different file. So you can see it's um, it's saying this is the content of demo.test.ts. Um, and I've got a bunch of test cases here. And if I go ahead and accept this, then it's going to add this new file. I don't actually have you know a unit test framework set up in this repo, so it has errors. Um, but that's okay. It's there's still good test cases. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, th I think that that's a good like kind of plug, right? A lot of people kind of get like nervous about Copilot. So like, oh, it's going to do my entire job for me. But no, like really, it's just a copilot, right? You're still kind of in control. So it can generate those, you know, test cases, but you still need to look, make sure it's what you want to test, make sure you have the framework set up, all that good stuff. So you are still in control. Copilot's just mm -hmm. there to kind of help and be like, hey, these are good tests based off what you've just shown me. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Um, we have a couple just quick questions. Um, Ahmad asks, um, can copilot document my code blocks? I hope it can, because I think a lot of us don't like documentation. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, you can use it to add comments also. I, I think we, did we have a slash command that does that? I don't know if we do that right now, but um, if I say, um, yeah, it, it added it to, um, to my interface and also to this function. And um, yeah, this is simple code, but that looks like uh, it's all accurate to me. So uh, it's very nice. Um, nice. And I, I don't know if you know the answer to this, because um, this is probably based on the underlying model. Um, but someone asked, is a Copilot biased towards or better at certain languages due to the training data set it's uh, trained on? Yeah, um, I don't know if I can really speak to that. Um, I, I would imagine that some languages are better represented than others in, in the training set. Um, but yeah, I'm not really sure. Yeah, it's definitely, there's so much going on in the underlying uh, model. So definitely, uh, whoever asked that question, sorry, I just lost you. Um, but definitely do some research, let us know. Um, but I'm sure there's a lot of you know good documentation on the GitHub Copilot docs um, to kind of see how it's being trained and things like that. And mm -hmm. then also try it out, let us know. Yeah, so then these uh, slash commands that I was demoing, we also have them um, over in the chat view. And, and, and also just say a word about the slash commands like I, um, I think what we're going for here is they basically just give you the ability to be very specific um, and succinct about what you want to do, right? You can, you know, instead of having to write out, um, hey, please write some unit tests for this code, right? Being able to just say slash, uh, slash tests, um, it's, a, it's a lot faster and uh, kind of gives you, you know, the ability to just be very, um, very direct and, and clear about what your intent is here. Mm -hmm. um, we also in the chat view um i want to show off we have the slash command slash vs code I, I had to zoom in a bunch and so things are getting shifted around a little bit but anyway if i say slash vs code um this lets me ask questions about vs code and it knows about vs code settings and it knows about commands and things like that and um, so for example if i say format file you know let's say i'm uh, new to VS Code, and I'm you know I haven't uh, haven't done this before, and I'm not sure where to go. Um, then it's going to point out that we have this command format document, and here's the keyboard shortcut. Um, so that's nice, you know. So then I can try that out and say, oh yeah, that 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 works. 
Um, or if I, I feel like this to... is like a game changer for like if I mean honestly even like one if you're new to VS Code right. Um, but even like I know I'll be in VS Code. I use it all the time, and I'll be like, oh my gosh, I know there's a setting for this, but I can't really remember, and or like I can't remember what the key binding is for this or something like that. Like normally I would go and search that on the internet and be like, what's the key binding for this? What's this? But now it's all just within your editor. Like you don't have to change that context at all, which I think is just so powerful. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I can also uh, use it if I want to, you know, let's say change something about the UI in VS Code, and I can say hide status bar. You know, all this all this stuff is getting in our way. And um, so we've got this command, toggle status bar visibility. And um, I also get this button, or I can click this to run the command. And yep, toggle status bar visibility is there. And so I can run that. And um, yeah, that's that's really easy. Um, or, or the setting, if I click this, it'll, it'll open the settings editor. And uh, something that's similar to that is we're also working on adding um, this kind of search to the, the command palette itself, right? So if I you know, like normally by default, you know, we're only doing sort of a literal search based on the exact names of commands, right? And if I don't quite know which word to use, or, or maybe I have a typo, or I, you know, you describe it in slightly different words, then it's hard to find the command sometimes. Um, I can even do sort of a natural language search in here and say, if I say how to turn on autosave. Oh my gosh, that's um, amazing. I, yeah, it, so it, it knows that uh, this is what I'm looking for, and I can then just run this command. Oh, that's, I feel like that's like a game changer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, somebody can like type and be like, I know it's like something like this, but I can't remember the exact thing. And then that will go ahead and bring it up. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Exactly. Or maybe I, you know, maybe I know the words, but I like get them in the wrong order. Right. <laughs> my palette. And so it, I, that can be a little frustrating sometimes. Ahmad said, now that's what I was looking for. <laughs> Same Ahmad, that is so handy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, another slash command that I, I like to show is that if you are working on developing a VS Code extension, we also have the slash command slash ext. And this knows about all of our um, extension APIs and the docs that we have for developing extensions. Um, so this can make it easy for me to, to look up how to use a VS Code API. And so if I say slash x like add status bar item, and this is going to generate some code, which can go into my VS Code extension that uh, shows me how to use the create status bar item API, and um, you know how to use that to, to make a status bar item show up, and uh, following all the best practices. And um, yeah, that, that can be super helpful as an extension developer. Um, another example, if I say. Yeah, then I just got this example using the find files API correctly. So um, yeah, just another example of how uh, I'm not sure whether I can do something or how to do something. Um, we can uh, uh, help you out there. Yeah, and there, we got a couple of comments real quick. Um, so it's wow. So it's truly integrated throughout the whole program, rather than just having use for helping with code. Impressive. Um, yeah, I think that you know. Rob, you can even speak to this too, but um, we have a section in the release notes um, right. ever since Copilot Chat's been announced and every single release, there's always new to show that we are really trying to make that as integrated as possible and put in as many places as possible to make your life as simple as possible. Exactly, yeah, we were trying to, uh, uh, to, to really bring it to where you are. And another example of that is um, that we're, we're actually um, looking at how if you have an error in your code, we can just you know have a copilot pop up right where that error is and help you fix that error. Oh, that's so awesome. so here's an example of, of some code that has some error an error and this is this is the sort of mistake that I uh, make pretty often, right? I have a map um, of strings to numbers and I want to sort of iterate over all of the values in this map. And I write that some code like this and I, I think that, that should work and and then it doesn't. Um, so right now, with these uh, Copilot features enabled, when I click on the error, I get the uh, code action uh, quick fix light bulb here. And so I can either um, just fix it immediately in place using Copilot, or I can have Copilot explain that error to me. Um, so first, I just want to explain it, because I, I don't quite understand uh, what that error means. And so it's going to slash explain just with the, um, the, the value of the, the message from that error. Um, and it's going to give me a good explanation of, um, you know, okay, this is the map, and here's what's going on. Here's what the values method does. Um, you know, the the values method does not have the for each method on it because it is not a um, it's not an array, 
and then it's going to give me a suggestion of um, some, you know, some code that I can I can use to uh, to fix that error. Um, but I can also just go to the light bulb and you know say fix in line, and it's going to use that inline chat widget oh, and cool. you know, do this with the same thing, and then I can just boom accept that, and um, now we're good. Oh, that's awesome. Um... Okay, a couple of other comments we have. First of all, I've, I I am reading all the comments. I know everyone wants to get off the chat wait list and you're looking for <laughs> um, a specific time frame for when you might do that. Fortunately, we can't give you that specific time frame. Just know that we are doing our best to get out there and in the meantime, working on as many improvements and iterations on uh, the experience as possible so that when you get it, it is good. So I promise I'm seeing you, I'm not ignoring you. We just don't have a definitive, you know, it's gonna be X amount of weeks, months, whatever. Um, so I don't wanna tell you something and then, you know, it's not true. So I see that happening, <laughs> um, but we do have um, the link posted in the chat for if you wanna join the wait list. Um, and then let's see, there's one other, there's a couple questions again. Um, Robbie spoke about this a little bit before, but maybe just reiterate, um, does it know your entire folder project? Um, what's it looking at for your context and what's the plan for what that context will be? Yeah. So Copilot chat, uh, really only at the moment has context about your current selection and the, the current file that you're working in. Um, but we are actively working on giving it more context about, you know, things you see in VS Code, about your debug console output, about the problems you see, um, and also about the rest of your, um, the, the workspace that you have, right? Other files that you have, um, even if they aren't open. And, you know, you should be able to sort of ask questions about that, um, um, about, your, about your workspace and, and have a co-pilot know exactly what you're talking about. Absolutely. Um, and then... Hey, Doug. Um, so Doug says an hour deep dive on this in the future would be great. I do think we're actually planning um, on having Burke come on in June to do one of those, a whole deep dive. Um, so stay tuned for that and for that announcement. Um, but we yeah, will have yeah, kind hopefully of we'll have even more uh, to show you by then. Yeah, absolutely. There's going to be so much. <laughs> I feel like honestly, we'll probably have like a spotlight of this for like every release party because there's so much going on. And then like a whole deep dive. People are so excited about this. Um, and, you know, it really is just cutting edge, right? And I think that that's goes to show, right? This is why we are kind of trying to like slowly roll this out to people, the wait list, um, because it is, there's so much changing, right, Rob? That's just, and there's so much work being done. Um, it's moving so quickly. So we just want to make sure it gets that that good point before we unleash it, unleash it to the masses. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay. All right. Is there anything else you want to show um, that Copilot Chat can do, Rob, or just talk about other things you're working on? Um, yeah, that's, that's about all I have right now. Awesome. Okay. And then, um, okay. There were a couple questions. We'll kind of end on this. Um, is there a knowledge cutoff like chat GPT has? I don't know if you know the answer to this. Um, but someone else asked a similar thing. If, you know, in the future, it looks at like your entire project. Um, is that, is there going to be some sort of knowledge cutoff with limits? Um, yeah, I mean, we want um, we, we wanted to essentially know as much as it can about, um, you know, the context of your workspace and the context of your window. Um, if you mean a knowledge cutoff in the sense of like the date, the information that the underlying model was trained on, you know, we're using, you know, essentially one of, one of the open AI models. And, you know, if they were, if they have a cutoff of um, stuff that was on the internet in 2021 or, or whenever that was, it's going to be the same date um, mm -hmm. for, for what you see here is probably for what you see in ChatGPT. Right. I think that's a great call out that we are kind of building on top of that model. So, you know, that that's what the underlying technology is underneath there. So that's whatever, you know, that model is, that's going to be kind of the source of truth there. Um, cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Rob. Um, people are always so excited to see this. Thank you so much for all your hard work on this. Um, and I am absolutely sure we will have you on in the future to see even more of what's going on with Copilot Chat. Great. Thanks for having me. Always happy to come back. Take care. All right, y'all, thank you so much for another amazing release party. Thank you for all of our presenters today. We had a lot of great features shown. Um, before we leave, just want to do a couple of plugs. Make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel, one, so that you can watch the replay of this uh, live stream, so that way you can relive all of the greatness. Um, you can also then see all of our long form videos. I mentioned earlier, we have VS Code Day on demand content that is available on a playlist on our channel. Um, so lots of great stuff on our YouTube channel. We also post shorts and we cross post those shorts onto our TikTok channel. Um, so if you're ever interested in kind of seeing extensions of the week, different tips and tricks, definitely check out both YouTube and our TikTok channel so you can stay up to date. Um, as always, I am so grateful that I get to be here with y'all to host these release parties. We will be on next week for another live stream and next month for another release party. 
Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for using VS Code and making it great. Have a good one. Thank you.